Since the days of the battle at Light's Hope Chapel, when we saw Death Knights finally break free from the Lich King's command, we thought that was the first time that Death Knights were finally free of the Lich King's grasp. Well, it looks like Season of Discovery has changed that lore with the discovery of Gregory, the Death Knight, with his own free will. Yes, we recently saw in a Season of Discovery Season 3 questline where we met Gregory. He was a Death Knight who had his own free will and yet still chose to serve the Lich King. The reasons why he was serving the Lich King are very interesting and we're going to get into some of those. The way you do this questline is you get into chatter with Aeonis the Vindicated. So if you don't know who Aeonis is, he is basically a paladin who was one of the first paladins to talk about how the light was not all good. Aeonis believed that the light was just like any other natural force that could be used for both good and evil. Back when Aeonis used to talk about this stuff, it was seen as blasphemy. So he was cast away from the other paladins and the lights of the Silver Hand. Eventually, through the Scarlet Crusade and the use of those powers for evil, Aeonis was eventually captured by the Scarlet Crusade and freed. And when he was brought back to Stormwind City, he was vindicated because they found out that he was correct. In fact, that not all things that have to do with the light are good. And he became Aeonis the Vindicated. Recently, Aeonis has shown us another thing, that not all Death Knights are mindless, pieces of the scourge. Ianus begins the quest line by telling us to kind of have an open mind, right? That he's going to introduce us to an old friend of his and he wanted us to give him a chance. He goes, please allow me to explain. The man over there is the friend we have spoken of. His name is Gregory. In the old days, before the fall of Lord Arad, before I left the Order, we were very close. He was a member of the Silver Hand as well and someone I trusted with my life. When the scourge invaded, he fought valiantly against them, but he died at Anderhal alongside the Lightbringer. We all know who the Lightbringer is. That's Uther. So this man fell fighting side by side with Uther against the Scourge. We go on to see that while this is not unusual for Death Knights to be seen as allies today, back in Classic, this was unheard of. And again, I talked about that early on. You know, for us, the battle at Light's Hope Chapel, that was the first time we really saw Death Knights, you know, fight back against the Lich King. That was the time that we saw the entirety of the Death Knight curse basically be broken and the Death Knights had their own free will and were able to rise up against the Lich King when they realized that that they were sent on essentially a suicide mission. The crazy thing about this guy is this stuff happened long before that quest line ever did. Anyways, we go on and we talk to him. Aeonis says, yes, the one he serves is Anthema to us. However, the world is not black and white. While we work against the goals of the Lich King, we also share a common enemy, the Burning Legion. So the enemy of the enemy is my friend. At times, perhaps, when Gregory came to me, I initially rejected him. Surely my friend was dead and this mindless thrall was a mere slave to the Lich King. It still disturbs me to admit it, but I was wrong. I found that my friend was still very much the man I knew when he beseeched me for aid in his mission to discover and destroy the orbs. I can never condone the mandate or methods of the Scourge, but I have come to believe that our cause is aligned. In this, he has my trust. Please speak to Gregory for yourself. My hope is that you will see, as I do, and can remain focused on our goals. So he's talking about an alignment of goals and the Burning Legion being the common enemy here. It looks like we've heard this theory before, that Arthas was in fact aware of the Burning Legion, he was aware of their coming, and he was trying to basically create a world of undeath to fight against the Legion. Now, whether or not you believe that that was out of the goodness of his heart, or whether he was just trying to siege power for himself, that's an argument to be had for another day. But there is lore, in fact, in Retail WoW that establishes that Arthas Menethil was, uh, even as the Lich King, was aware of the Burning Legion and still wanted to fight against them. So this is the common conversation that we have with Gregory. My word, you look nearly as pale as I am. You think you had spoken to the dead. Your response to him is, I have no time for games undead. I need you to make this make sense to me. Very well, very well. It is as Aeonis said, I was once a paladin, just like yourself. I believed fiercely in Lord Aran, in the Silver Hand, in my oath. My heart broke when Arthas plunged his blade into my king's heart, and I fought until my last ounce of strength was gone on the day he killed my lord the Lightbringer in Anderhal. Yes, you say, you stand under the banner of the Lich King. Now this is an interesting part here. Yes, here I stand. At first my soul railed against what was done to me, to my homeland, to my friends and family. As time passed in death, however, I was able to find perspective. Yes, at first I was what Aeonis initially feared me to be, a 
mindless thrall. But just as Arthas threw off the chains of the Legion and freed himself, the domination grip of the Lich King slacked in the minds of his minions, and I was able to free myself as well. So he basically says that over time, the Lich King's magic over him kind of waned. So we respond to him here. After what you've seen, what he made you do, how could you serve him still? This is very important here, because this hints at a lot of stuff. His response here hints at a lot of stuff. These next two responses about what we're dealing with currently in retail. Wow. In life, my brothers called me the truth bearer, and I was hailed for my introspection and sage wisdom. As I rediscovered the parts of myself that were lost, my eyes were open, and I began to feel the burden of the knowledge that I was able to glean from the mind of the Lich King while under his domination. There is part of me that will never forgive Arthas for what he did, but I cannot ignore the cold, hard, truth. We ask him, what is that truth? His response, that our world is but a tiny speck in the grand cosmic game. There are forces far beyond our ken lurking in the darkness. Titans, demons, the void. They are all deadly beyond anything we've known, and they are all hungrily devouring world after world in pursuit of their own ends. What hope do the mortals of Azeroth have against such forces? We need to be stronger. We need to be more than we are able to stand against them. We need to be undying. That's right, so he feels this this whole thing about undeath being the only way to push back against the Burning Legion, demons, titans, and the Void. So he mentions the Void as well, which is the current cosmic force that we are going to be dealing with here in the war within, and it was his belief that only in undeath could we defeat these horrible beings that are coming for us. How we respond to him, you know, pushing back against this idea. This is a delusion. The only thing that undeath brings is oblivion, we say to him. And he responds, does it, or is that what you tell yourself to maintain your righteous clarity and purpose? In death, we become all we are, and so much more, and we need to be more to fight against what is coming. But, it is not my place here today to sway you to my perspective. So Gregory, again, has a very interesting thought process here. Here, he has seen things that we have yet to see, at least in SOD, and we're starting to see now in retail. But through the Lich King's mind, he was able to glean that horrible things like the Titans, the Legion, and the Void are coming for us. And it was his belief that only under the Lich King's command and in Undeath would we be able to defeat them. Somebody earlier mentioned in chat, Stodic Gaming, that Rathian was of this mindset as well. And that's very true. Rathian was. Rathian, in fact, wanted to eliminate either the Horde or Alliance because he, he believed that only a single mindset, Azeroth, would be able to defeat things like the Burning Legion coming our way. So, again, this is not some kind of foreign concept. The concept of Arthas Menethil basically creating an undead army to fight against the Legion is not a foreign concept. But what is a foreign concept here is a Death Knight so early on in World of Warcraft was able to regain his own willpower. Now, what does this mean going forward? Well, we know now that it, this, again, changes the lore in retail because SOD is directly connected in timeline to retail. So now we know that Death Knights have been around with free will for quite a long time. And we also know that Death Knights might be coming to SOD. That's right. If you haven't played Season of Discovery because you love playing Death Knight like I do, well, this could be a pathway to create some cool-looking Death Knights. Some interesting classic versions of Death Knights going forward. Who knows if we're actually going to get that, but uh, this definitely would be a, a way to get it in the lore. It seems to build up SO for SOD to be a throwaway. I don't think it builds up necessarily for SOD to be a throwaway. Um, it's already been confirmed that SOD is basically in uh, the same timeline that we currently live in, but we're discovering things that we hadn't previously discovered by going back in time and kind of reliving these events and digging deeper into the world of Azeroth itself while we're reliving these events. Maybe people are going to get their uh, Classic Plus after all. I really think Season of Discovery is already Classic Plus. I don't know whether they're actually going to create a separate Classic Plus, but to me, that's what Season of Discovery is. They're already giving it raids, and dungeons and new lore. I mean, to me, Season of Discovery really is classic plus. What happens uh, going forward after level 60 and everything, that is yet to be determined, and I guess that would technically be the classic plus everyone talks about, but I think they'll just still call it Season of Discovery. It'll continue in the same format they've been doing here. Wait, I thought SOD was a separate timeline, which is why uh, Zal is in it. No, uh, it has been confirmed that SOD, by Blizzard, that SOD is our timeline, but we're going back in time. So it is not an alternate timeline. It is, in fact, just older timeline where we're discovering things and we're able to basically go back to this timeline and discover things via our new knowledge and everything else and Zalateth is able to do that too. How she does it we don't know yet. She has friends in the infinite dragon flights so maybe that's how she's doing it. But yeah, Zalateth does show up in SOD and she's doing things in SOD that may eventually affect our current, uh, you know, the way we're currently seeing things 
in retail. But we'll have to see. All in all, I love this lore. I think this is really cool. Gregory being this, you know, Death Knight who was able to break free of the Lich King's curse so early on in the curse itself. That's some really cool lore, and I hope they, uh, you know, they go further with this and we see more of it, more things like this.